Hi, friends. This is Heaven. I'm Tracy. And welcome to another round with Heaven and Tracy. <laughs> Not our theme music. <laughs> I'm with it, though. I'm with it. Are you recovered from last week's episode? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I feel like we should personally like, apologize. Like, apologize to everyone, their individually. moms, <laughs> their families. Uh, we don't even know how that happened. Well, I'm on new meds, so it affects my my drinking differently, which I need to remember. I have no excuse. <laughs> yeah, Tracy has no excuse. I'm on my old meds. I know how this works. <laughs> but, yeah, we, we like to get drunk on the show, but, you know, yeah, we, we like to keep it professional. <laughs> I still think it's... Jesus Jesus is his fault. I agree. Because his little diva self wanted Heineken. Man. I'm not <laughs> drinking bourbon. So we just kind of drink all the bourbon. Drink this portion. Anyways, yeah. we are drinking, but <laughs> we're, we're being reasonable amounts this time. We're being responsible <laughs> this time. So thanks for coming back. And we are so sorry. So I'm excited for this show, but I'm also kind of nervous. Why? Because we're flying solo for the first time without a guest. So it's just the two of us. True. But what we're if people not get bored? Solo. <laughs> One, people love us because we're great. <laughs> True. And even if they don't love us, we're great. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to try out some new segments. We're going to try some more shorter things where we talk to people around the town. <laughs> yeah. Every week's not going to be the same. Right. Though this week there's definitely going to be a bad joke because I feel like people are starting to get angry. <laughs> the people are demanding it. <laughs> at the lack of bad jokes. I get to tell my my famous, my world famous nun joke. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm nervous. <laughs> Are you excited? Your cackle. Okay. <laughs> so what have you been thinking about this week, Tracy? Um, in spite of myself, I cannot help but think about all of the, like, the rash of police murder. It's not even shootings anymore. Mm. It's almost like they're finding new ways to, like, kill us in the street, you know? A policeman literally said to a man who was saying, I can't breathe, I'm losing my breath. Mm. Fuck your breath. Like... Mm. That feels oh, so every heavy. story is yeah every story is awful but it just seems like each one gets worse and worse and worse and yeah. worse and it used to be that you had to be by a television to get news stories and yeah, now you literally God, just not like, like that anymore <laughs> well it's kind of worse now because like mm. you can just like turn on your phone and you have like a litany of like black bodies in your palm which sounds awful but it's yeah. also true so anyway I've been thinking about like how to like stay afloat Mm. I try to remind people on Twitter you know as we get story after story after story to like take a break disengage log off drink some water I'm all about disengaging yeah sometimes you really do have to unplug and not because you know it's it's not important that you watch it's not like this is not saying that you know there's no point in you like knowing about the story or whatever because yeah absolutely stay informed mm. but also take care of yourself too. Woo, speak on it. How do yeah. you what is your self-care like regimen? What do you do to take care of yourself? Well, I watch TV. Mhm. Usually trashy, awful television that's nice. like <laughs> petty and insignificant and like, you know, like for me to laugh about some somebody, some reality show chicks, bad lace front. Yeah. <laughs> for 30, it's a much 45 needed reprieve. minutes. <laughs> yeah, you have to like let yourself yeah. do stuff like that sometimes. I also crochet. Ooh. Which is so Yo, like, I need some hobbies. <laughs> let's get you a hobby. Listen. I feel like, I don't know, sometimes I wonder if we do self-care things that are actually destructive <laughs> Ooh, like what like staying in my room for 48 hours and not speaking to humans hmm. feels like self-care yeah when you're sometimes in it, it it's like not <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i'm trying to get better at like a healthy amount of human interaction <laughs> mm-hmm. that's hard though yeah because my immediate instinct is to disengage from everything yeah i watch a lot of tv are there certain kinds of tv shows that you seek out when you're like looking to just like oh yeah definitely i mean like almost all comedies Okay. Or anything that will give me a good cry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. You know how I am, though. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just love think a it's so cry. amazing that. Well, I am on season eleven of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> oh my god, my mother is obsessed with that. Listen, show. I'm still here for Grey's. I'm not here for Scandal anymore, but I yeah. will stick with Grey's. Okay, I don't like to feel sad, like on purpose. Sad or scared, I tend to not. But it's such a good release. You're not just crying about the show. You're crying about everything. Yeah, I do that during my period, though. Like whether I okay. want to or not, so I don't need. To. <laughs> well, same, but <laughs> you need more, more outlets for tears. I say. 
yeah, I'm always very, very interested in how people care for themselves yeah. and if they're caring for themselves at all because a lot of people, I feel like, need to be reminded more often to, yeah. like, exercise some real. aggressive self-care. Yeah. Like, kind of reminding yourself to, you know, take stock of, of like, your body and your personal breath. You know, like, mm. it, there are horrible things happening in the world, but, like, I'm still here. I can walk. I can enjoy a glass of water, yeah. you know, and I have to remind myself that I definitely can't help anybody if I'm not good and okay. Woo, speak on it. You know? So we took a walk around our office and we talked to a few of our coworkers to see what their self-care routines are like. And here's what they said. I just feel like I've gotten to a point where it's just like, I can't just keep going on Twitter or Facebook and just saying like, our lives matter and people, like people just don't respect that. It's also getting to the point where I just feel like there's so many m murders that are happening that like, I can't even keep up with it sometimes I, like I've even taken like days off work and like I will go and just like have like a social media free day and I don't know if escapism is like the best thing but I like to go into a movie it's dark like get my favorite snacks and just like zone out for like two hours and not have to worry and the last time I did this like I went to go see um Cinderella which I really enjoyed uh hi yes my name is Michael Blackman and I work at BuzzFeed Hi, my name is Sylvia Obel. My self-care is disconnecting from the internet, no, not watching any videos anymore of people getting killed. Um, I will like attend vigils, marches, like all the marches in New York for Eric Garner I attended just because that sense of community and just gathering with people who felt your pain and your anger about it. I felt like it was in a way the most release I could get. I still wanted to feel like I was doing something. So like, to me, that's what helped as well. The night uh, the Zimmerman verdict came in was the night I had to get a haircut. I was at my barbershop and a bunch of people from the neighborhood just came in and started like talking about it. And it was just like really comforting because I was so angry at the time when it was happening. And then to be around a lot of other people who are angry makes you like relax and think, okay, the world's not that crazy because here's all these people around me that feel the same way I do. I'm Albert Samaha. I'm a criminal justice reporter at BuzzFeed. I really have no right to have to deal with anything. I'm not dealing with anything, right? I'm just sitting at the computer, talking on the phone, meeting some people. It's the people on the other side of the notebook or whatever that are dealing with things. On the other hand, I mean, I, it gives me some like peace of mind to be so immersed into this like world or this scene. Not necessarily that I feel I'm able to like help things or improve anything because I don't really know if I can at all. I guess I've gotten kind of so deep in that I'm never going to totally be able to just like remove it from the back of my mind. But also, you know, I play a lot of basketball. That's probably the only time I'm not thinking about like injustices happening to people and bad shit going on in the world. Other than those like six hours a week, that I'm like, that's all I'm thinking about. lighten things up a little bit <laughs> i know that we we started kind of heavy we gave y'all a lot so we're gonna try to uh uh send things in the opposite direction with a what it happened was hey, literally blah, 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 every blah, blah. <laughs> every what had happened was is tracy because i never leave the house <laughs> <laughs> what so last episode the very little that I remember from last oh episode. My I do know that we were talking about Cracker Barrel. And somewhere in there, I said I was going to tell the story of my first trip to Cracker yes, Barrel. Yes, I want to hear. So this is my first trip to Cracker Barrel. Let me take a little sip in preparation. Yeah, these cups are loud. I didn't want to. I know. Sorry. <laughs> what happened was I am probably a freshman or a sophomore in college. <laughs> this the was. Dark ages. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is like everybody's most militant time, right? <laughs> um, I mentioned that I went to a really, really white and also really racist college. Yeah. I was one of 20 black people. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking to cling to anything black that yeah. I can. So I did a lot of reading um, 
I would literally go to the library and just camp out in like the Black Power section. I would take <laughs> a pillow from my actual bed on like oh, a Saturday because I had Tracy. nothing else to do. I know this is my life. <laughs> um, so at this point in my life, I was reading um, Black Power, The Politics of Liberation mm-hmm. by Kwame Turi, known mm-hmm. also as Stokely Carmichael and Charles V. Hamilton. My mother... Myself and my niece. My niece was probably about five or six. She was so tiny and so adorable. <laughs> she was so cute. Um, we were going to go to breakfast and my mother wanted to go to Cracker Barrel. I said, absolutely not. Had you been there before? No, I had never been. So this is my first trip to Cracker Barrel. So what did you associate with Cracker Barrel? I always thought it sold clothes for some reason. <laughs> I just assumed it was a place for country old racist white people. Okay. Because that's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. So for our listeners, it's if you're... It's also called Cracker Barrel. <laughs> right. A barrel of crackers. Literally, I cannot think of a place that I would rather not be. Yeah. It's a more strange name for a restaurant. <laughs> it's just really weird. And like, it looks like an old timey, like the outside has yeah, like this big whole wooden aesthetic. wraparound yeah. porch with actual rocking chairs on it and i yeah. can just like picture like <laughs> an old man with a spittoon and a, <laughs> and a rifle but my mother insists mm-hmm. i'm still her child after all she's driving <laughs> and paying hi mom hi mommy i know you're listening <laughs> you know how you do. i'm like all right fine you can make me go to cracker barrel but you cannot make me enjoy it i took my book again i was reading black power the politics oh, of God. liberation <laughs> And uh, my hair was permed at the time, but if it wasn't, I would have picked it out. <laughs> into, like, Retroactive the biggest, <laughs> the biggest afro, yes. We get there, and I make sure that I hold the book so that the <laughs> so that the title is very, very petty, like, Tracy. <laughs> Everybody see what book I got. You see what I'm about, right? <laughs> Try something. Yeah. Try me if you want to. And That's like, smart, I'm, actually. See? <laughs> Shit. Exactly. So I walk in. And I've got the I've got black power like emblazoned on my chest because I'm like hugging the book to my chest <laughs> and I'm just like ice grilling everybody. I'm like, try something. I dare you. I dare you. I was very surprised to see black people actually working there. And I was oh, like, oh, y'all mm. don't even know that we've been free for how many years? Y'all don't got to do so this dramatic. no more. Listen, that was me. <laughs> They're just trying to pay their rent. <laughs> right, exactly. But what really fucked me up is the the trinkets and stuff on the walls, right? Ooh. So again, for our listeners who have not been to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> in heaven. <laughs> in heaven. Oh my gosh, I in still heaven. Haven't been. Oh my gosh. So you know how TGI Fridays has all this like, yeah, stuff on the wall. random shit. <laughs> Imagine this as like <laughs> a Jim Crow themed oh! TGI Fridays. By that I mean like there are just like old signs that you know are hanging up somewhere in America during the days of segregation. Yeah. Right? Like I always look up and I'm just, there's like a wash tub like an iron wash tub that somebody <laughs> probably bathed their babies in and probably what? had babies in. yeah it's crazy and they have like uh like horse saddles and just like <laughs> right. remnants of the good old days right yeah. it's kind of like anything that you would imagine left over from the set of um the Andy Griffith show which I don't mm. even do you remember the Andy Griffith show no I don't remember I mean it. are you familiar <laughs> no, with it <laughs> I wasn't even negative alive then <laughs> <laughs> So depressing. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it like that. It's, it's fine. It's true. But it was there true. anything in the trinkets that was like explicit? No, but I always expected to see like some slave shackles or something on the mm. wall. I swear to God, every time I went, I was looking for a whites only sign or a colored sign or like a, some actual shackles or like, you know, just something. <laughs> yeah. So we get there. I'm pissed off. I'm uncomfortable. I'm ready to go. And we sit down and we order. Everything looks like whatever it just looks like breakfast food right <laughs> Girl, i love breakfast breakfast is so good <laughs> and that was my problem with the food like the food gets here i'm determined not to smile <laughs> listen i took a bite of the hash brown casserole for Ooh. the first time and i felt at once like uncomfortable but also <laughs> really satisfied that's like living in america <laughs> <laughs> My mom's like, so how'd you like it? I was like, you know, it's... It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> and said, I'm just like, girl, that's what was happening. Oh, it was up. It was going up. But my final middle finger to Cracker Barrel. Mm-hmm. When we were leaving, I told my niece to put her fist in the air as we were walking oh my gosh. outside. And she was like, why? I was just like, no, <laughs> Do it for Black Power, it. baby. <laughs> just do it. You'll, it'll make sense one day. Oh, my God. She won't even remember, <laughs> Tracy. She was just like, what? 
it, but she did it though. It was my little homie. She did it. Oh. And so on the in the car on the way home, I was like, so am I allowed to like go back <laughs> on purpose? Who are like, you asking myself? <laughs> I was like, can I stay in the revolution if I willingly go and spend oh, my hard earned black dollars at Cracker Barrel? Can I do that? I think you're allowed to. <laughs> I do very often whenever I can when I get home. Ugh. Oh, but it was compromises difficult. we made. Uh, <laughs> I feel like every black person's first time at Cracker Barrel is like one of the most confusing, soul shattering. <laughs> like it just rearranges everything you thought you knew about yourself. Mm. But it's so good. Dang. It's so good. We gotta go to Cracker Barrel. We should. We're introducing a new segment this week. We're going to be answering some reader questions. You guys send us awesome emails, and we want to read like one or two maybe every week. I'm excited. So this first one is from Jasmine from Philly. Jasmine says, I cut my hair about two years ago, and I've been natural ever since, but I've encountered so many damn stereotypes. People always think I'm an artist, a mm. poet, or the voice. <laughs> I know, girl. <laughs> <laughs> or the voice of reason of all black people. It gets so annoying. Like, just because my hair is this way doesn't mean I'm any different than when I was when, it, when I wore it straight. She also says, it's like I can't get some people to look past what my hair looks like and see me for me. Mm. Girl. I hear you. <laughs> and so when white people make comments like, oh, my God, I love your hair. It's so natural. It's so voluminous. <laughs> Good impression she goes, white it's so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to know if you guys have ever experienced this personally and what you did about it or any advice you have. Oh, man. So, I feel like I've bonded with every woman in New York City about hair. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So I've been natural for six years mm -hmm. and you've been natural forever, right? Yeah, but when I say that... So, like, 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually 13. <laughs> no, so I've been natural my whole life, but I really, really, really wanted a perm. Mm. It's just my parents wouldn't let me. When's the last time somebody Ooh. asked to touch your hair or just touched it without... Asking? I don't know, like, last weekend, probably. Mm, mm, mm. It happens so often. Yeah. And not just white people, because mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people touch my hair. Yeah. For me, it seems so evident that, like, you just wouldn't stick your fingers in a stranger's right. hair. Just don't touch people that you Especially don't know. Especially without asking, but just in general. Yeah. You don't know what's in here. You don't know if my hair is dirty. Exactly. It's not, but I you don't know like that. I have a machete up here. <laughs> so if you put your hand in my hair and you get cut, then I'm at yeah. fault. So it just doesn't make sense to me on like a very basic level. Right. Also, my brain is up here. <laughs> what? I don't want you that close to my brain. If something happens to it, they're I die. They're not that close. Hey, they're a lot closer than they would be if they were just minding the damn business. True. 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 You ain't lying. <laughs> but I do, yeah, I do encounter a lot. A lot of times when I put my hair up, people, like, don't even recognize me. That is so insulting. It's like, you've never looked at my face. You, you only see my hair. cannot pick me out of a lineup. That's so weird. But there's a part of me that's just, like, used to it. I, th I think mm, that... I'm definitely used so to it. So if it's, like, a situation where, you know, maybe it's somebody that I just met and yeah. we're talking and then they just happen to do the reach and then the ask thing, <laughs> I'll kind of, like, lean a little bit. Oh, I lean. Yeah, and I'll be like... <laughs> Uh, you Why should you should happening? ask first. Yeah. yeah, you should ask first. But if it's like a complete stranger, then I get a little more hostile. Mm. I was at a party once. Oh my god! <laughs> it was at the end of the night. I was a lot younger. I was not sober, and there was some white guy in a in a tank top, and he just <laughs> full on put his hand completely in my oh. head. I read this man the riot act for fifteen <laughs> minutes straight. I was pissed. Mm. I was so pissed. And then there are some people who are like, you should just take it as a compliment. And I'm like, nope. nah. Nope. You deserve to be respected. respected. <laughs> Not petted like a fucking like animal. Like a dog, <laughs> like a goat or something. And like, I just, I, when... We have a social contract where we will not interrupt each other's personal bubble. Exactly. Why are you doing this? Right, right. It's just the assumption that like, you can just do whatever you yeah. want to people. You can't. You cannot. I've gotten so you many drive-by pettings. That is the worst. They don't like even in a pause. club or something. They don't even stop. It's just like, ooh. I felt it, and now I'm moving on because right. I felt like it. Ugh. And Ugh. even from black people, like the conceptions of like who you are or yeah. like what kind of like poet. Oh, I get called Erica Badu, <laughs> which is a compliment. Yeah. Thank you, but it's inaccurate and lazy on your part. I get yeah. called Jill It just Scott. feels weird to like assume someone's politics from their hair. Yeah. I never do that. Ever. If your hair's straight, permed, curly, whatever, like mm -hmm. I'm just like, it's gonna... just like my future baby daddy, Andre 3000, <laughs> of the rap group Outcast <laughs> once said. So mm -hmm. Now question, is every nigga with dreads for the cause? Is every nigga with goals for the fall? No. No. So don't get caught up in appearance. Yeah. 
my advice, girl, is just roll your eyes and keep it moving. Yeah. Give them a little Heisman on them. <laughs> like, keep it moving, yo. <laughs> like, this, I think it at some point, like, it just becomes a thing that you're used to weathering. Kind of like oppression. <laughs> Kind of like living in America. Kind of like living in America. Living in America. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you learn to sort of steal yourself against it. You learn to smile and say thank you when you have the energy when somebody's like, oh my gosh, your hair is yeah. amazing. I wish my hair could do that. You know, you learn to just be like, oh, thanks. I also love to share strategies with my girlfriends. Mm -hmm. So some like, oh, like just ask them follow-up questions like, did your hand touch the subway today? I don't want your hand in my hair. I'm sorry. Bye. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like things like that. I love hearing people's like versions of like, how do you deal with that exact moment? Mm-hmm. So we talk to your do, girlfriends. And just keep on keeping on. I know, girl. It's as long as the struggle we are is seen, real, but we got you. Yeah, as long as blackness is seen as something alien, then mm. this is this is your life, unfortunately. I just feel like I brought this all the way down. <laughs> yeah, you really but did. I'm sure you slight oh girl. Yeah, yes. <laughs> do it. So that was our first advice segment that currently does not have a snappy name. Um, <laughs> if you have any snappy name suggestions or if you have any questions. Um, any, or need advice. Drop us a line. You can email us at another round at buzzfeed.com. You can tweet us, even though email is probably better. Yeah, so I'm just, email us. <laughs> just email us. Just email us. The people have spoken. Mm hmm. We have heard you in your demands <laughs> for another corny joke. Some of yes. you are getting kind of hostile. <laughs> I just need you to understand that I have a limited amount of jokes <laughs> thus far. Actually, if anybody has any great, awful jokes that they would like us to read <laughs> on the air, uh, send those to us, too, at another round at BuzzFeed.com. Um, you will be fully attributed, of course. <laughs> I will not take credit for them. But um, All right, you are you in for, for a treat. This, this, is, this is another one of my favorite jokes that I've been telling. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I've been telling for years. Everybody <laughs> hates it so much. <laughs> so, once upon a time, there was a convent, right? Okay. Priest gathers four nuns into his priest room or whatever okay. i don't know what it's called <laughs> i have no idea shout out to the priest room shout out to the priest room uh the priest is like um sisters you know you're you're very young you've been very sheltered your whole life i want you to go out into the world for two weeks i want you to live among the people i want you to take off your habits okay. i want you to be one of the people come back here in two weeks report to me let me know how it goes mm -hmm. the four nuns go out two weeks later they're back in the priest room with the priest the priest looks at the first nun says Oh my God, where is this going? <laughs> Priest says to the first nun, Sister, tell me how your time was out in the world. The nun number one says, Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. She said, I was out at an open air market. I took an apple and I ate it without paying. I'm so sorry. Dang, girl. <laughs> no, she's been out there for two weeks. She's already a hardened criminal. <laughs> the priest thinks about it and he says, Go say three Hail Marys and anoint yourself with the holy water and you will be forgiven. Mm hmm. And then scuttles off to wherever the holy water is. <laughs> <laughs> she she gets the Hail Marys off, three of them. She puts the holy water on her forehead. Priest looks at the second nun, says, Sister, tell me about your time in the outside world. Mm. And then says, Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. He's like, Okay, what did you do? She says, I saw two people having sex in an alley and I watched them for a very long time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 All right, girl. <laughs> The priest thinks about it. He says, go say six Hail Marys, anoint yourself with the holy water, and you'll be forgiven. <laughs> she says, thank you. She again scuttles off to the holy water, splashes an extra douse in her face because she felt extra, extra guilty. Mm -hmm. Said a Hail Marys, felt a lot better. At this point, the fourth nun is like doubled over laughing, right? <laughs> the priest is looking at her, and he's like, what? what's wrong? She's like, oh, nothing. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get it together. Priest looks at the third nun. Sister, tell me about your time in the outside world. Nun number three says, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. He's like, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> and she says, oh, um, I saw a blind man drop his wallet. And rather than pick it up and give it to him, I Ooh, picked it up and I kept dang. it for myself. Okay. Priest says, okay. I would totally do that. <laughs> <laughs> Priest says, go say 10 Hail Marys. Anoint yourself with the holy water and you'll be forgiven. Nun says, thank you, scuttles off. I don't know why all these nuns are scuttling. She goes out <laughs> to the holy water. <laughs> At this point, nun number four is on the ground, <laughs> clutching her side, <laughs> nearly hyperventilating with laughter. Mm -hmm. Priest says, sister, what is wrong with you? And the nun, when she catches her breath, says, <laughs> oh, God. 
I peed in the holy water. (laughs) (laughs) Give it up for Tracy, Tracy y'all. Tracy's jump time. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, Tracy. What would I do without you? I feel so much better. I've been holding it in for a week. (laughs) Heaven. What's up? Guess what time it is? Buy another round. Yes. This week I am buying a round for Veep. Mm, this sounds <laughs> because, familiar. <laughs> because I did not do it just this last week. <laughs> last week was a struggle for everybody. It was involved. a struggle. So but tell us again. I did not sufficiently express what I like about Veep. I don't think you. I don't think the people anything. know anything about Veep from what I said. <laughs> so let me try again, y'all. Okay. Bear with me. Go ahead. <laughs> so Veep stars julia louis dreyfus (laughs) whose name i do know how to pronounce (laughs) there's a lot of shows about politics right now Mm -hmm. but this is one of the few that's that actually says anything about politics Hmm. so like house of cards i I don't even know how we all came to even think it was good it's not that great it doesn't really have anything to say about politics it's good drama Mm. if you're into that I will follow Robin Wright's haircut anywhere, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and like Remy is fine. But you know, it's like Veep, I think, gets more at the like kind of dumb compromises you have to make and like the like put on face of politics. Mm-hmm. Whereas House of Guards like really tries to suggest like they're all that serious and they're all that conniving. I don't think they're even that smart. Mm. I think on Veep, it shows that politicians are dumb, as dumb as they are. <laughs> Okay. I like it just in terms of being a show about politics, but it's also a good show about if you like women in comedy. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a pretty good, like, ensemble cast. There's, like, Amy, who's her uh, chief of staff. There's Jonah, which is this, like, unwieldy kid (laughs) who's, like, their White House liaison. There's Tony Hale from Arrested Development, who plays, like, her kind of like bad guy (laughs) you know how every time we're out and you're like who's that and i'm like Uh this is the person from that thing you like them because of this (laughs) like that's what their relationship oh my god it's a lot like us us. (laughs) heaven who is this person that i meet them you like them because they did this one thing (laughs) so i think it's it's like a rich world there's sue who i really love she's the black um secretary Mm -hmm. but unlike almost every black secretary role she's actually funny and smart and good oh yeah, so I think it's just really smart, well-written, dope women, good insults. You know I love me some good insults. <laughs> God bless the president. You know, I mean, he's really a great man, but he is busting my fucking lady balls. Hmm. That's a pretty convincing sell for me, I think. I tried to watch it. I couldn't really get okay, into it. Okay, my last plug, which I think you will like. <laughs> okay. There's a guest star with Chris Maloney. Chris Maloney from Law & Order. SVU. <gasps> do you know how I feel about Chris Maloney? I do. Chris Maloney. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put on my sexy voice for a second. <laughs> Chris Maloney, if you're listening, do get in contact with Oh my the show. God, yes, please contact us. We would love to have you on the show. I would love to have so you. So he has else. a cameo on season three where he plays basically, this is not like, I'm very anti-spoiler. It's not really a spoiler. It's just a plot point. He plays basically a hired sex person <laughs> for Julia Louis-Dreyfus. I'm in. I'm <laughs> exactly. watching V two nights. Don't you want to live in a world where Julia Louis-Dreyfus is vice president and she's hired Chris Maloney? <laughs> are there are there shirtless scenes with Chris Maloney? Yes. <sighs> I think that's the... Don't you just want to be a part of that universe? <laughs> I'm into it. Who are you buying around for? I... I'm going to buy a round for all the nail technicians out there. Ooh, yes. Here's why. So my nails look like crap now, but I got my nails done for the first time literally since prom. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Tracy, your nails are always on point. Thanks, boo. Thank you. <laughs> but, yeah, that's one of those things where I'm like, why would I pay somebody to do this if I can do yeah. it myself? Like, I mean, I don't do, like, all the acrylics myself. Yeah. Although... Sometimes, and I feel okay sharing my beauty secret with our listeners, <laughs> if I'm like in a pinch and I don't have time to like actually paint my nails and do yeah. like all the coats and the hardeners and like the nail designs or whatever, if you go to CVS <laughs> or Rite Aid or Dwayne Reed or Walgreens or Walgreens. Harman <laughs> and get some, um, they're called Impress. It's an Impress manicure. Yeah. 
They last for about two weeks. They have a lot of great colors. I've seen them. They look designs. great. I know nothing. I'm not, I'm not above a press on it. And they're not like the press on nails from yeah, like, yeah. Oh, when, man. like your mom's press on nails. Where like if you so much as like drum like your nails on the table. Press yeah, on nails. yeah, like with the little piece of sticky paper. No, this is like <laughs> serious, serious stuff. But I decided to take a break from that and from doing my own nails mm. and actually go get my nails done. Yes. I have felt so glamorous. For like the past two to one and a half weeks. <laughs> nice. And like going back to self-care, like mm. one of the things that I like to do for myself is kind of like pamper myself. I'll do my hair. Yeah. I'll do like a deep conditioning thing. I cut it. But I mean, it just felt so good yeah. to just walk in and let somebody else take care of me mm. for a second. You know, what? because black <laughs> women are just always taking care of the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to take care of me at the end of the day? My nail technician. So, <laughs> um, shout out to Ella. Let me buy Ella around, <laughs> and also any other nail techs out there. Yes, you've inspired me to get my first pedicure this season. Yes, well, you know the sun's season. coming out. The you sun do that is out. You get them sandals on, girl. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. We did it, guys. We did it. Woo! Hopefully you enjoyed it with just the two of us. Just the two of us. Hey. We can make it if we try. Just the one. <laughs> <of us. laughs> okay. What if all your favorite songs had a Jamaican air horn in it for no reason? <laughs> I would enjoy it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for rocking with us again, especially after last week's episode. You must really <laughs> love us if you came back for more. We would like to thank everybody in the whole wide world, especially our producer, Miss Jenna Weiss Berman. Hey. Yay. And for our other producer, Miss Eleanor Kagan. Yay. Like the Supreme Court justice, but even better. <laughs> what a slogan. <laughs> Put that on your She's resume. Elena Kagan. This is Eleanor Kagan. Get to know her name. Also, special thanks to Julia Furline, who is not here, but she is here in spirit. We love you and we miss you. And Paul Ruest at Argo Studios. Thanks for holding us down. Woo. We want to thank our our musical geniuses, Don Will of the Almighty Tanya Morgan and Jean Grey, who has also made us some custom tunes. Yes. Some custom damage from her. Uh, thank you so much for upgrading our podcast. What else? Thank you to heaven for being heaven. Oh my God. Thank you to the Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> I should, you should never let me live that down. <laughs> I never will. I, I've never been so drunk where I just stick a random article <laughs> in just a random sentence. I want to think Why am I just sticking thus everywhere? <laughs> Pray for me, y'all. So I would good. love to thank the Tracy. And I'd like to thank you all for yes. listening despite and because of our craziness. Yes, we get the best tweets all the time and the oh, best emails. And we they don't genuinely respond make my to day. all of them. I know, but we see them all and we love all of them. We love y'all. Send us more. Let us know what you think. Questions, comments, complaints so we can laugh at. <laughs> Email them to us at another round at BuzzFeed.com. You can follow us on iTunes. Follow us on Facebook and on Twitter at another round. Follow Heaven on Twitter at Heaven Rants. Follow me on Twitter at Broken Poverty. Call your mom, drink some water, take a stretch, take Call your care mom, of yourself. Definitely drink some water. Take your meds, everybody. Don't oh, forget yeah. to take your meds. Don't, take, don't forget to take your meds. Okay. See so, y'all yeah, next week. We love Bye. You. What is Stokely Carmichael's new African name? Kwame something, right? <laughs> Kwame Carmichael? <laughs> I forget. Um, I thought he is still Stokely. Still Stokely? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a fun sitcom. A fun sitcom about black power. <laughs> oh, Stokely. <laughs> They're remaking Full House, but they can't get a black power sitcom. <laughs> What's good, America?